Hello, this is Dwayne, and I am not a financial advisor, but I love sharing the insights that have helped me build wealth and are helping me expand it for generations to come. Well, today, I want to talk about the biggest wealth grab that is going on right now, and you need to find out whether or not you're participating on the right side or whether you're on the wrong side. Well, in this video, I'm going to make it very, very clear for you so you'll know where you stand. Well, do me a favor. Subscribe to this channel. Hit that notification bell so you will know when I'm putting up more great content like this on a daily basis. My goal here is to be a wealth connector. I want to get you connected to living a wealthy life. Well, if you're going to live a wealthy life, that life has to be built. One of the ways which I'm helping people do that is through my Wealthy Life Masters Discord. We put up great content there on a daily basis that's going to help you get out of bad debt. Use good debt to build wealth. It's going to help you increase your credit score. Get your credit established. We're looking for scores over 750. We're also going to help you invest in stocks, options, crypto, real estate, we're going to get you invested in art, all the good assets that are going to put income in your life. And lastly, we encourage and help you live an authentic life, simply loving who you are. Well, if that excites you and you love to be part of it, the top comment for this video is a link to my Patreon where you can get my private discord. It's also in the description for this video along with a link to my link tree which gets you connected to everything that we've got going on well i'm so excited today i really want to talk about this wealth grab and i want you to know where you stand so you know what actions you need to begin taking this week well let's get after it Like I said, we're going to be talking about the biggest wealth grab that's going on. And I want you to know where you're at. You know, I've got a few things to explain and uh, I really want you to get it. Let's first look at what took place this week. Uh, so on this Wednesday, the Fed takes first step toward end of pandemic measures. The Federal Reserve is dealing with high inflation at a time when millions of workers remain on job market sidelines. Wednesday's announcement that it will slow bond purchases is a step toward more normal monetary policy. Now that's what's stated. So they come out and they made an announcement and in their announcement, they're saying on Wednesday, they laid out a plan to slow their 120 billion monthly treasury bond and mortgage backed security purchases by 15 billion a month starting in November. The purchases can lower long-term interest rates and uh, prod investors into investments that would spur growth. Now, this is important. Prod investors into investments that would spur growth. I want you to see where the Fed's balance sheet sits. Uh, this balance sheet is, if you can look at their balance sheet, back in uh, January the 16th of 2008, it was uh, here at 893581, 800,000, all right? Then we move here to Wednesday, November the 3rd. It is 8 million. And these, these uh, numbers uh, are just ridiculous. 8,574,000. 1,871, um, but in reality, we know these are billions, but it's just, it's just, I want you to see where, where this is. We've had this kind of a jump since the housing crash in with banks and all that in 2008, all the way up until now, when we had COVID hit, you can see it just went straight up. So with all the bond purchases that the Fed was doing during that time to steady two things, the stock market and the housing market, I want you to understand that there's two things going on here. They're steadying 
the housing market and the stock market. Stock market. Now, I want you to understand something. There's a huge problem. There's a huge problem if the Fed tapers. Now, listen. If they taper, first of all, I want you to understand what tapering means. Uh, and so we'll, we're going to go and look at what tapering really means. So, first of all, you know the Fed needs the stock market and the housing markets to do well. I want to start off right there. They need it to work. But here's what tapering means. It means the Fed is decreasing the amount of purchases they're making monthly. So the Fed will now purchase 70 billion worth of U.S. Treasuries instead of 80 billion. And then they're going to purchase 35 billion worth of mortgage backed securities instead of 40 billion. Now, what are mortgage backed securities? Mortgage backed securities help prop up the housing market. They keep mortgage rates low by buying more of these securities. So they're going to start tapering. They're going to start purchasing less. As you can see, instead of doing 80, they're going to do 70 of the treasuries. Instead of doing 40, they're going to do 35 billion of the mortgage backed securities. So they're going to stop buying these. Now, if they stopped buying these uh, two things, tapering, bringing it back, it could create a huge problem in the bond market. I've been saying this for weeks because in the bond market, then we would see interest rates go up because there would be all these uh, interest rates would have to go up because there'd be all these bonds out there. No one desiring to buy them because, again, there's too many bonds in the market. So you'd have to raise interest rates to get people interested in buying them if the Fed stops they're purchasing and yet there's that many still available and so with that in mind there's something very very essential that happened on the exact same day that this announcement was made look at what the treasury department did the u.s treasury unveils first cut in long-term debt sales since 2016. now what did they do the u.s treasury announced the first reduction in its quarterly sale of longer term debt in more than five years on Wednesday, reflecting diminishing borrowing needs as a wave of pandemic relief spending ebbs. Now, what are they? What is this saying? This is not the Fed. This is the U.S. Treasury. These are two different things. The, the Fed is supposed to be independent, operating on their own, and the Treasury is the Treasury. They, they, their job is to see to it that these bonds and things are available to be so, purchased by you, me, whomever. Well. It just now says on the exact same day, the exact same day that the Fed says we're going to buy less bonds. The Treasury comes out and says we're not going to sell as many longer term bonds. So you're talking about we're not going to be selling as many bonds 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And when you look at the story of what matter of fact, I want to go back there real quick and see what they're saying. When you look at what they're saying, the Treasury Department in a statement Wednesday said it will sell 120 billion of long-term securities at auctions next week. That's down 6 billion. So they're scaling back. The deepest cuts will be in seven year and 20 year treasuries. Now, again, that's the ones that the Fed have been purchasing. So they're cutting back where the Fed has been purchasing and they're going to prop it up by releasing more one month, two month, three month bonds. And so what's happening is, again, I, I, I want you to really get this because this is this is going to affect you and me and it's going to affect you in a big way if you don't understand it. So it says uh, these will drop 60 billion and 30 billion in December. Okay, they're cutting it back. It does not mean the Fed is shrinking its balance sheet. Under the current plan, the balance sheet will grow until about July 2020 when they stop purchasing. Now, what we what do we've got to know? The government can't stop spending money. Why? Because if the government stops spending money, it's three biggest things: Medicare, Social Security, and interest on the debt. They're not going to be able to fund them, so they can't stop because they don't bring in enough money through taxes. So the government can't stop borrowing. And how do they borrow? They, they sell bonds. They sell bonds. And when people buy these bonds, the government is getting money. But that's borrowing because there's interest to be paid back on these bonds. So they keep borrowing. The Fed can't stop buying bonds because the government can't stop selling them. 
So there's a deal being struck, and we're going to get out of long term. We're going to get in short term. Now, if the Fed stops buying bonds, you get a giant interest rate spike, which crashes stock and housing markets. Notice where they've been doing their buying. They've been doing their buying in two areas. One affects the stock market, and one is mortgage-backed securities, which is affecting the housing market. When they started making these announcements for weeks that tapering is coming, what they in essence were doing was alerting the stock market to react now so that when it starts, there isn't a reaction. This is this is the protection of the stock market. This is the protection of the housing market. If the Fed stops buying bonds, you get a giant interest rate spike, which crashes stock and the housing market. If stocks and housing crash, government tax receipts plummet. If housing crashes, people aren't paying those mortgages. Housing crashes. If, 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 if these things crash, people are not investing in stocks. They're not getting those capital gains. You're not getting that money. The government has to borrow even more. So what does this mean? This means that the stock market is going to do great in the short term. The housing market is going to do great. Bitcoin and crypto are going to do great. And if you don't get in, you are missing your opportunity to grab up wealth. Because what this is just telling me is that they are going to protect the stock market and the housing market. Therefore, Bitcoin is going to be protected. Therefore, crypto, period is going to be protected. Now, I want you to really hear what I'm saying to you. The Fed is supposed to operate independently, but on the same day, they make their announcement. The Treasury Department makes an announcement as well. You can look into the detail and you can see that the two of them have obviously come in collusion together to see to it that the stock market does well, that the housing market does well. So if you're not looking to buy real estate right now or you're not invested in real estate right now in any way shape or form you're missing out on this great opportunity to see things skyrocket housing prices are going to continue to go up people are going to continue to make good money in housing and i want to tell you something else blackrock which is the biggest asset holder is heavily invested in reits all over the united states and they could not afford to have interest rates going up I said this several weeks back when this tapering stuff was beginning. They couldn't afford to have interest rates going up. And so what we're seeing now, we're seeing the Treasury saying, we're going to issue less. So there will be no extra. There'll be no reason to have to raise the interest rates because there's not going to be this flood of bonds coming into the open market. This is a great strategy in a crazy system. But if you don't understand what it means, it means that you need to be putting your money in the stock market, you need to be putting your money in the housing market, and you need to be putting your money in crypto because they're being protected by the government because it can't fail. It's just like in 2008 when we had banks that were too big to fail. This is much bigger than banks too big. This is about a whole industry. This is the reason why you heard under President Trump, he spoke so much every single social day about what was going on with the stock market. And once COVID hit, the need to protect the stock market went through the roof. The need to protect the housing market went through the roof and therefore that affects banks. That's why the day after this announcement, you saw banks take a hit because there is going to be a short term effect on banks being able to collect the interest on those bonds, those longer term bonds that are not going to be issued. And so they're going to have to be switching over to getting people into one, two, and three month bonds because they're going to be issuing less and less of these seven to 20 year bonds. This is a plan. And I'm just getting, once you to understand, it may be a lot to wrap your mind around. You don't believe, do some research as you should do research. I'm, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing to you information that is really interesting to me that now I know for a fact that our government is very interested in the success of the stock market. They are very interested in the success of the housing market. Not only are so interested in it, they have made a deal to see to it that it happens. And so you are not wise if you're not in stocks, if you're not in housing, and if you're not in crypto. You're not wise because they're being protected in this country. And if you live in the United States, 
and I might as well say the world, because our treasury bond interest rates affect bond prices all over the world. Our Federal Reserve, which is our central bank, is doing what they're doing in monetary policy, and it is going to have an impact on every country with a central bank, which all but two have. So what's happening in the United States is affecting the global economy with this decision that's been made this week. And so it's going to prop up the global stock market. It's going to prop up the global housing market. And it's going to prop up globally crypto. And this is one of the reasons why I'm also saying this to you. You're going to be finding less and less opportunities to mine crypto because the big wigs want to be able to take that away from the everyday average person. You're finding them shutting down certain crypto you can't buy in the United States and certain crypto you can't buy in the UK. And you can't buy certain crypto because state countries are making Bitcoin legal tender. So the big grab is to keep the regular ordinary guy away from the big money. You've got to wake up and you've got to seize your opportunity to get in on this wealth and find your way. As soon as you find a way to get in, you'll notice certain things start changing when a lot of people start getting in because the, the institutions want this money. They want this money and they want to be able to make this money for the people who invest through them. So the regular retail investor, the guy like me who's doing it on his own, he's not trusting in the big guys. He's doing it on his own. They want to lock us out. Well, you can't afford to let yourself be locked out. Knowledge is what keeps you from being locked out and you've got to get started and get started now. Well, as you can see, I'm fired up about this because it's okay. They're protecting the stock market and the housing market and Bitcoin and cryptos are going to be protected under these policies. But at the same time, they're reaching their hand because people are ignorant of what's going on and they're going to grab as much as they can so that when you finally wake up, there'll be very little for you to grab. They're taking the property. They're buying up the stocks. They're buying up the companies. Trust me, they're getting the crypto. These institutions are grabbing and you got to wake up and get in before it's too late for you. All right. Well, I'm so glad to share this with you on today. I look forward to getting back with you again very, very soon. There's a big wealth grab going on. And let's get ours so that we can not only have a wealthy life for ourselves, but we can extend that wealth to generations to come. You have a blessed day. I look to talk to you very soon.